Welcome to the Cry Aloud Radio Broadcast. Today I would like to just take a few minutes to talk to those of you that don't have a church home. I know there are many who say, I don't need to go to church. I can be just as good a Christian at home. I can get what I need from TV or radio. Well, Christ set up the church, and the Bible tells us that we need the church. We're told not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. The church is a place where the body of Christ comes together. The body can only function properly as a whole. Members separated from the body can't reach their full potential. The body provides support, encouragement, fellowship, opportunity, strength, and so very much more. There's power in the body. Jesus said, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am in the midst. And I can tell you from experience that by joining with other believers, you become a more complete, stronger, a more joyful Christian. The sheep were never intended to be solitary. They were intended to be part of a flock, and we are the sheep of his pasture. Those sheep that are separated from the flock are easily picked off by the enemy. Those who are separated from the flock, if they're wounded or hurt, they have no one to help them or pick them back up. And I know some will say that I used to go to church. I got hurt. I was treated bad. I was ignored. People were two-faced. They're nothing but hypocrites or any number of other reasons they give not to go back. But every church is not like that. When a body of believers comes together in Christ, with the only purpose being the will of Christ, under the direction and leadership of the Holy Spirit, then there's genuine love and unity. There are no big I's and little U's. Every member, from the pastor to the smallest child, is equal. Then there are those that'll say, I can't find a church where I fit in, or I can't find a church that I'm comfortable in. Well, don't quit looking. If you don't give up, God will place you where he wants you. It's important for every child of God to be a part of a body of believers, to join with and fellowship with our brothers and sisters in Christ, to have brothers and sisters to support you, to care for you, to encourage you, to love you, to pick you up if you fall, to bind up the wounds if you're hurt, to help protect you, if you don't currently have a church home, for whatever reason, I'd like to invite you to come visit us. We're a very small body of believers, but we are a family. We're dedicated to our Lord and to each other. Our focus is on reaching the lost, the weak, the hurting. Our focus is on strengthening, encouraging, supporting, and loving our brothers and sisters. We're not new or modern. Our focus is not dollars or numbers. We're not wrapped up in activities and programs. We're not about denominations or conferences. We are about hearts and souls. We walk the old path and we follow the old landmarks. Our doctrine is the doctrine of the Bible. Our head is Christ. We are led by the Holy Spirit, not by denomination, conference, or any man. We believe the entire Bible. Nothing added, nothing taken away, and we will not compromise on the Word of God. We believe that God is not willing that any should perish, and that every soul is precious to Him. And because it's precious to Him, every person is precious and important to us. We believe that by the grace and love of God, we can be a home to those who are truly looking for a place where everyone matters and where Christ is the reason. If you have a church home, you should be there at service time. But if you don't, and you would like to come visit with us, or if you have any questions, you can listen for the information at the end of the broadcast. We would be honored if you would stop by, and we would love to meet you. Now, let's go to the Word of God. And remember that. God lowered that head because he knew his man. He knew Job. He knew how Job would react. He knew what Job would 
do. He had every confidence in Job. I want to say to you this morning that if you are a child of God, you have got a hedge about you. Satan can't come and do anything to you unless God allows him to come and do something to you. If God allows Satan to come and do something to you, it's because God has confidence in you. It's because God trusts you. It's because God knows who you are and what you are and how you will react. And I want to tell you something. If you're going through something, if you're dealing with something, if you're fighting a battle, you need to just raise your hand and praise the Lord because he has enough confidence in you to allow these things to come on you. I'm going to tell you something. That is an honor. That is something that we can be grateful for. What does the Bible say? To rejoice in your tribulation. How can I rejoice when I'm going through something? How can I rejoice when I got all these problems? I can rejoice because my God knows who I am. He knows what I can take. He knows what I can stand up to. And that's something to rejoice about. If God has that much confidence in you, believe you me, you can deal with anything that comes down the road. You can deal with anything that Satan is going to throw at you. God believes in you. You just need to start believing in yourself. You need to start understanding that I can do all things through Christ. There can nothing come on me. God cannot allow anything to come on me that I cannot handle, that I cannot deal with. He has given me the overcoming power. He has given me the ability to deal with anything that comes. Amen. Amen. Listen to this in Job. He said here in this verse, Hast thou not made a hedge about him? That's what Satan said to God. And we talked about that, but I want you to hear this in the book of Psalms. Psalms 34, verse 7. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. You've got a hedge around you too. What did that say? The angel of the Lord encamp round about them that fear him. You have a hedge of angels around you. If you fear the Lord, if you serve the Lord, if you are a child of God, you are encamped about by angels. You have got a hedge around you. You cannot be uh, approached and dealt with by Satan unless God allows that to happen. I'm going to make this point one more time and then I want to move on. God will only allow it to happen if he knows his child. He knows what his child can stand. He knows his child can handle it. He knows his child can get through it. So if it's come upon you, you need to have confidence in the confidence that God has in you. But what I want to tell you this morning is that you have a hedge around you. I read you that where the angels encamp round about you and you have a hedge around you and Satan can't come and do anything to you as long as you're in that hedge without God's permission. There's a lot of time we'll do things or we'll go through things and we'll say, well, the devil did it or the devil made me do it. He can't make you do anything. It is your choice. You are given a choice. And as I already told you, he can't even get to you unless God allows him to get to you. But there is one way that we let him get to us. Listen to this. In Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 8, he that diggeth a pit shall fall into it, and whoso breaketh a hedge, a serpent shall bite him. You've got a hedge around you. Satan can't get through it without God's permission. But if you break the hedge, then he can get to you. And that's the problem a lot of times. We want to break the hedge. We are protected within that hedge. But when we stick a hand out, or when we step out of it, that's when we get bit. That's when the snake takes a hold of it. When we get outside of the hedge, he can go all around that hedge on the outside and he can tease you and he can taunt you and he can tempt you. He can present all manner of things to you. But as long as you stay in that hedge, he cannot touch you. But the problem is we give into those temptations. We give into those taunting. We give into those things that he presents to us and we break the hedge. And once we break that hedge, he can take a bite out of us. He'll stand outside that hedge and he'll begin to say things to you. Look at what that one over there is doing. They're talking about you. They don't like you. They ought not to act like that. 
you are to go tell some stuff on them. And you'll step out of the head and you'll begin to run your mouth and you'll begin to gossip. And that's because that old snake has got a hold of you. He has pulled you outside of that head. You're inside that head and he can come right up to the end and he'll take something that looks really nice and looks really good. It's pleasing to the eye. It's pleasing to the flag. He'll take it. He'll lay it right outside of that head and he'll say, this is yours. You can have it. All you got to do is reach out here and get it. And when you reach out there and get it, he latches on and then he's got you. And that's what happens to us a lot of times. I said it already, but I'm going to say it again. A lot of times we'll say, well, the devil made me do it. He can't make you do anything. It is your choice. He presents the opportunity. He will tempt you. He will tease you. He will prod you. He will do all kinds of things. But it is your choice whether or not to break that hedge. Amen. A lot of times we're human. We're flesh. We're weak. And we will give in. And we'll reach out. And he'll take a bite. The worst than that is a lot of time once he takes a bite, we don't want to do anything about it. We don't want to fix the problem. We don't want to take care of it. God will convict us. And we'll set and we'll justify ourselves. We'll set and we'll say, well, it wasn't my fault. So and so did this. So and so said that. It wasn't my fault. And we just leave that in there. It's just like a splinter. If you get a splinter and you don't do anything about it, it begins to fester and it gets more sore and it gets more sore and it becomes worse and it becomes worse. You got to get it out of there. As Christians, that's what we got to do. When we fall, when we fail, when we stumble, we need to realize it and take care of the problem. Do you ever have a little kid with a splinter? And they'll come and show you how bad it hurts and you get the needle out and they're running. They'd rather deal with the splinter than with the needle. That's our problem a lot of time. We'd rather deal with the splinter than with the answer to the problem. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it hurts. Sometimes God will really convict you. Sometimes God's got to give you a little whooping. Sometimes you've got to admit things to people you don't want to admit. You've got to confess your fault. And we'd rather just deal with the splinter than to deal with the needle. The needle only hurts for a little bit. And then the splinter is gone. And it can heal up. It'll be sore for a little bit, but eventually it heals up. But as long as you leave it in there, it's never going to heal up. It's going to get continually worse and continually worse and continually worse. When we got these things going on, when we get weak, when we get in, when we reach outside of the head and we get that bite, we need to go to God and allow him to take the needle and to get it out. It only hurts for a minute, but then it's so much better. Amen. Amen. Let me read you something else here. This is in the book of Luke, chapter 11, verse 21. This is Christ speaking. When a strong man armed keepeth his palace, his goods are in peace. But when a stronger than he shall come upon him and overcome him, he taketh from him all his armor wherein he trusted and divided his spoil. When you were a child of Satan, before you were born again, there was a strong man who lived within you, who guided you, who led you, who directed you, who took you into things you are not to be doing, who took you places you are not to go. He controlled your life. He had you walk in that path of sin. But listen to this. When a stronger than he shall come and overcome him, he takes all that away from him. What you accept in Christ, a stronger than he came, a stronger than Satan came. When you were ruled by Satan, there was a strong man ruling you. But listen to that. A stronger than he came and took everything that he had. You are now controlled. You are now indwelled by the strongest one, by a stronger than he. He cannot do anything to you. You need to understand it. I hear so often from Christians, the devil made me do it. I was tempted and I gave in and all these things. We make excuses. You cannot be made to do anything. You have the stronger man. You have the one who cannot be defeated. The problem is we break the hedge. We reach out for something. We step out for something. And when we break
bite the hedge, we allow the serpent to bite. There's no opening. There's no doorknob. There's no way to get in from the outside. There is no entrance. There is no access from the outside of that head. It only opens from the inside. Satan cannot come in and do one single solitary thing to you unless it is open from the inside. We need to realize with whom we have to do, who it is that indwells us, the power that indwells us. What we've got going on in here cannot be defeated, cannot be overcome, except by ourselves. Satan cannot do it unless we open the door. That is the only way, that is the only possibility. In the book of John, chapter 16, verse 33, Jesus again, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. I'm not telling you that things are not going to come. Jesus himself said, in the world you will have tribulation. There's scripture that says, it rains on the just and the unjust. Because you're in this world, because you're in the flesh, there are things that are going to happen. But what I'm telling you is, Satan cannot do anything to you. Satan cannot make you do anything. Satan cannot bring you down unless you open the door. You're going to have tribulation. You're going to have trial. You're going to go through things. You're going to have to deal with things. But Satan can do nothing to you. Satan cannot bring you down. He can't make you do anything. He, he cannot control you unless you open the door. You have to understand that. If you break the hedge, you have given him the right. You have given him all he needs to come in and begin to do things to you and to mess with you and to cause you to sin and to pull you away from Christ. But it's only when you break the hedge that he can come in and begin to do this kind of thing. I want the church to understand. I want Christians to understand. You are a protected people. Satan had to go before God. Even he had to admit, I can't get to Job because you protect him. I can't touch you because you protect him. God is no respecter of persons. He doesn't like Job better than you. I read you the scripture. Those of you who fear God, those of you who are children of God, those of you who serve God, you are encamped about by angels. There is a hedge around you and Satan knows it and he has to go before God and say the very same thing. I can't touch him. I can't touch her because you are protecting them. You have got a hedge around him. We as Christians need to understand there is no weapon formed against us that can prosper. There is nothing this world can do to us. There is nothing Satan can do to us. We are the protected of God. We are inside of that head and nothing shall by any means hurt you unless God allows it or you break the hedge. Amen. And I think a lot of Christians got a lot of holes in their hedge. We've allowed so many things to creep into the church. We've allowed so many things to creep into our lives. We justify this, and we justify that, and this ain't so bad, and this ain't that bad, and God understands. Well, I'm going to tell you something. Every one of those things makes a hole in the hedge. Every one of those things gives Satan a doorway into your life. And let me tell you something. Once he gets a foothold, it's not that easy to get rid of it. He digs in and he hangs on and he'll begin to give you more reasons and more things and all kinds of other stuff that just makes it worse and worse and worse. What you need to understand is if it's happening, you've got holes in your head and you need to get it fixed. It can be repaired. That's the good thing about God. He is the master gardener. He can fix that head just like that. He can build it back up again so that nothing can get through it, so that that serpent can't get through. But you've got to fix it. You can come in and cry your eyes out. You can stay on this altar for seven days, 24 hours a day. If the hole isn't closed, it's not going to do you any good. A 
lot of time we'll come to God. Oh, God, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. Forgive me. And we get up and we go on and we haven't changed a thing. We haven't fixed a hole. We haven't repaired the head. And so nothing is going to be any different. We get to feeling a little guilty or a little bad and we'll cry out for forgiveness. And we'll get up and the next day we're doing the very same thing that caused the problem in the first place. What does repentance mean? It don't mean say I'm sorry. It means to turn from that thing that you were doing. You turn completely away. You go completely in the opposite direction. You repair the whole and you stand in the protection of God. You stand in the mercy of God. I'm telling you, I don't know if you've experienced them lately or not, but the devil has been fighting. The devil has been attacking. The devil has been trying to pour it out. But I'm going to tell you something. As long as that hedge is around you, those fiery darts, those things that he throws, they're just going to bounce off of that hedge, and they're not going to get to you. But I'm going to tell you, you're going to have all these things going on, and you're going to begin to look out there, and you're going to begin to think and to say, well, this just ain't right, this just ain't fair. I need to do something about this. And you step out of the head to try to do something about it, and he's got you. Amen. You need to stay in there. And let God deal with him. Amen. Remember, a stronger than he has come. And he will take care of it if you let him take care of it. you got to get out of his way. you got to trust him. you got to believe him. you got to hang on to the promises of God and stay in the hedge. He wants to pull each and every one of you out of there. He wants you to get you to step onto the outside. Because as you step out there, you're in his territory. But as long as you're in that hedge, that's God's territory. And he can't get in. He has no access. He has no entrance until you open it up to him. I think we as Christians don't even realize what we've got, who we've got, the power we've got, what's been given to us. I, I'm going to say it again. We are protected by the mighty hand of God. And Satan cannot get through it. No matter how bad it looks. No matter how bad it sounds. And you're in the hands of God like that. Satan cannot get through. He can stand outside and sound scary. And make noises. And tempt you with things. And make it really look bad and sound bad. But as long as you stay in there. You are fine dirt cellar and they pull the big iron door shut and they can hear it out there they say it sounds like a train and they can hear stuff flying and crashing and breaking and going on but in that basement they are safe they are protected it's the same thing with the child of God sometimes it sounds really bad and there's a lot of destruction going on out there but don't stick your head out to see what's happening don't get so curious you want to take a peek because once you open that door if that wind will just yank it off and suck you out of there. That's exactly what Satan will do. No matter what kind of noise he's making, no matter what kind of show he's putting on, no matter what he has tempted you with, don't take a peek. Amen. That's all it takes is one peek. If they are going through a tornado and they lift that door up just to get a little look, and wind grabs that door and takes that door off and sucks them right up out of there, and they're gone. And that's exactly what Satan will do to us. You need to stay inside the protection. You need to stay in the hand of God. In the center of those angels that encamp round about you. In the center of that head where you cannot be touched. I know it looks bad sometimes. I know it feels bad sometimes. I know it sounds bad sometimes. But you have a promise from God that you are safe, that you are protected, that you are cared for. Believe him. Trust him. Stay in that place of protection. Now, I started saying, I don't know if you've experienced it lately. If you haven't, you're going to. Because he's coming, and he's coming hard. He knows his days are numbered, and he's pouring out all all the stuff and anybody who's truly a blood-born 
uh, blood bought child of God, he's going to come after you. He's going to attempt you. He's going to try to get you to step out. He's going to make some noise. See if he can get you to take the love. He's going to try everything he can when he comes and he starts knocking on the door. You just remember, stay inside. Stay in God's love. Stay in God's protection. Stay where you are safe. There's nothing out there worth looking at. There's nothing out there worth getting. There's nothing out there that's worth your soul. Stay in God's protection. Amen. You will have trouble. You will have trial. You will have tribulation. You might get financially down. You might get physically down. You might have to deal with family. You might have to deal with this, and you might have to deal with that. That's a part of living in this life. That's a part of being in this flat. But even through all of that, you are still protected by God. You are still in the center of his love. You are still encamped about by those angels, and Satan can't lay a finger on you. But if you let that sickness, if you let that financial problem, if you let that family problem make you step out of there, then the serpent is going to latch on. Stay in Christ. In the book of Galatians, <coughs> let me read this first. In the book of Galatians, chapter 3, verse 26, it says, For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Listen to that, really catch this. Those of you who have been born again, those of you who have had the blood applied, those of you who are saved, who are children of God, as many of you as have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. You are covered with Christ. You are in Christ. When Satan looks, what he sees as Christ, as long as you stay in the center, you've been baptized into Christ. You have put on Christ. You are now a part of Christ. If you remember his prayer, when he was praying for his disciples, he went on and he said, I don't pray for these alone, but for everyone who will believe because of their word. That's you and me. We have believed because of what was written. He said, I pray for everyone who has believed because of their word that they may be one in us we are in Christ and when the devil looks and we have the blood applied he sees Christ and he knows he cannot defeat Christ he knows he cannot conquer Christ Christ already showed him that at the cross he defeated Satan and as long as we stay in Christ we are protected I really want you to understand what you've got who you are where you are you are seated in heavenly places you are in Christ Jesus. You are one in him. You have all his attributes. When Satan looks at you, that's what he sees. And the only way he can do anything to you is if you step out. Stay in Christ. No matter how bad the storm sounds. No matter how pretty it looks, what he's tempting you with. No matter what is going on outside of that head. Stay in Christ and nothing shall by any means hurt you. No weapon for and against you will prosper. You are in the loving hands of an almighty God and cannot be touched. If you would like a CD of this sermon in its entirety, include the broadcast date when writing. If you would like other sermons, offered free as the Lord provides. If you have a prayer request or question, if you would like more information, or if you would like to support this ministry, contact us at revbread at mail.com. That's R-E-V-B-R-A-D at M-A-I-L dot com. Or you can write to Reverend Brad Sizemore, B R A D. S-I-Z-E-M-O-R-E, -E, Post Office Box 134, Glenrock, Pennsylvania, 17327. We invite you to come worship with us at Jefferson Free Will Baptist Church, 4740 Sportsman Club Road, Spring Grove, Pennsylvania, near the town of Jefferson. 
a church that stands on and believes in the entire Word of God. If you have a need, whether it be salvation, healing, deliverance, or guidance, God is able. Service times are Sunday school, 9 a.m., Sunday morning worship, 10 a.m., Sunday evening worship, 6 p.m. Come on out and hear the uncompromised Word of God preached in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for listening, and may God preserve you blameless until the coming of our Lord.